What's going on, everybody? We are back again. <laughs> again. And we're doing the fourth final word story. We're so excited. We actually got through them all. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say at this point. Uh, welcome back. Thank you for tuning back in. I very much appreciate it. We're going to read this story. We're going to read it good. Yeah. All right. Let's gra- Let's get right into it. No four mentions. It's a weird one, but it's good. The title of this story is... cashier works silently as he rings up all of my items. One pre-made sub, sub, sub sandwich, one Snickers bar, and a bottle of Coke. Beep. Swish. Will that be all? Asked the cashier. Yeah, I replied. 9.57, said the attendant as I slipped my card into the reader. It was only $10 in my bank account, so I watched anxiously, hoping it would be approved. There was a ding and the cashier said, have a nice night. I grabbed my card, slipped it into my wallet on, the, on my phone case, put it back in my pocket, and grabbed my bag of items to leave. As I walked out the door, I went to turn right to stop by the liquor store next door. But remembering I didn't have any cash, I turned around and went left instead. When I turned the corner of the gas station to go home, I was met with a large, hooded man. I stopped, and he stared at me for a moment. I looked behind me to see if he was looking at someone else, and when I turned back, he was right in front of me. In a second too quick to react, he pulled a knife and slashed at me. Suddenly, everything went black. I jerked awake and sat up in my chair. I rubbed the dreariness from my eyes and looked around. I need to go to bed, I said as I stood up from my chair. I started looking around for my phone to plug it in, but couldn't find it. Suddenly, I remembered that I left it in my car when I got home because I thought I was going back out. I picked up my keys, hit the unlock on my key fob, and tossed them on the table. I let out a tired sigh and walked out of my house. I went down the driveway to my car and opened up the door. There I found my phone, sitting on the seat where I had left it. I grabbed it and went to go back inside. When I got to the door, though, I found that it was locked. I tried a few more times, thinking somehow it would open if I put more force into it, but found no success. I remembered that I put a key under the mat for cases like this. I pulled up the map, the map, but found nothing. I later found out that my friend still had the key from when he watered my plants when I went to Aruba. I had one last safety measure, though, as I always left the window in my bathroom unlocked. I walked all the way around my house to my window and gently pushed up. To my amazement, the window didn't move. It was locked. I started to panic because I was officially locked out of my house at 2.30 in the morning. My mind started rolling with what options I had. My closest family member lived two hours away, so that wasn't an option. I tried to call my friend to pick me up, but he didn't answer. After realizing that I wouldn't be getting help from someone else, I went back to my car, thinking that's where I would be sleeping that night. I got into the back of my car and locked the door so I wouldn't be kidnapped in my sleep. As I was laying there, I became content with my fate for the night, and as I started to drift to sleep, a sound woke me back up. It was my stomach. I suddenly remembered that I had only eaten a bag of chips that day, but figured I could fill up tomorrow. My stomach, on the other hand, disagreed. I started to feel wild hunger pains shoot through my abdomen and realized I wouldn't be able to sleep until it was satisfied. I unlocked the door, got out, and headed to the gas station just down the street. I didn't live in the best neighborhood and never went out this late at night, for good reason. After a terrifying walk that seemed like three times longer than it actually was, I reached the gas station. When I walked in, I realized there was only two people in the beaten down building, the cashier and myself. I walked over to to the fridges and grabbed a Coke. Then I made my way to the deli and grabbed myself a sub sandwich. As I walked up to the cashier, my eyes caught the image of a Snickers bar, and I couldn't help myself. I put all of my items on the counter, and the cashier started to ring them up. Beep. Swish. Beep. Swish. The cashier worked silently as he rung up all of my items. Beep. Swish. Will that be all? Asked the cashier. At this point, something felt extremely off, but I paid no attention to it. Yeah, I told him. 9.57, said the cashier. I slipped my card into the machine and remembered my bank account only had $10 in it because I was getting paid tomorrow. 
It was approved. I grabbed my card and items and headed out the door. I instinctively turned right to grab some alcohol from next door before stopping, remembering I just spent my last dollars on a gas station dinner. I turned around and headed to the left. Just before I got to the corner of the building, I stopped. Suddenly I remembered the dream I'd had before this whole fiasco started. I slowly crept towards the corner and peeked around it. What I saw riddled me. It was a large, hooded man. I quickly turned around and ran back to the entrance. I looked back and saw the man had turned the corner and was staring at me again. Scared to death, I sprinted away from him. I turned the opposite corner and didn't slow down. I could get to my house from this direction, but I would have to go around the block. In the moment, though, I didn't care. I ran as fast as I could until I reached my house. I aggressively yanked on my car door, but nothing happened. Fuck, 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 I thought. I ran to my house door, hoping to gain access to anything. Somehow, the door opened, and I went inside. I slammed the door shut behind me, locked it, and fell to my knees. I could barely breathe. At this point, my fear and exhaustion got the better of me, and I passed out on the floor. When I woke the next morning, I tried to figure out what happened the last night. But to this day, I don't know why my door was locked, or why it suddenly was unlocked. The only thing I did know was that I was glad I'd had that dream. And that's what I have for you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, catch us next time. Subscribe if you want to. Like the video, you know, if you want to do all that stuff. Uh, and we'll see you at the next one. Thanks. Bye.